when we say that. <laughs> I know, we were thinking about it now. It's okay. Nice. Okay, a proper setup. Mm -hmm. All right. So Sam, I'm gonna go ahead and move over to the house rules and sure. I'm just go ahead and get started, guys. So welcome everybody to the uh, Ladies of Sound community chat. It's a space for us to connect, support, celebrate each other, share stories and knowledge. Um, just a couple of things before we start. We um, have some house rules. So uh, if you don't mind, if you guys are uh, have your video on, if you don't mind, please keeping yourself on mute if you are not speaking, just for your uh, uh, experience here. I feel like the speakers on everybody's, uh, you know, when you're on Zoom, it's really sensitive. So, uh, you know, it'll, it'll kind of mute everybody else. So if you don't mind just keeping it on mute. Uh, for your viewing experience also, you can click on do not show video participants. Um, there's three little buttons on the top, well on my, on the screen, the top right, um, and you can just click on that and say, and sh put do not show video participants. Um, don't be shy and use the chat, engage with the community, and please be kind and positive. Um, and when the, we get to the Q&A portion of uh, today's uh, chat, um, if you don't mind, please raising your hand or type a one in the chat and we'll get to you in a chronological order. Um, from there, uh, we would love for you guys to actually go ahead and ask these questions to your uh, to the guests yourself. Um, go ahead and press unmute when the moderator gives you the cue and go ahead and ask away. So, all right, on the next slide for today, uh, you guys already know my name is Maricel. I'm the principal at the Beat Junkie Institute of Sound, um, as well as the Lady of Sound ladies of sound founder can't even talk and then we have sammy g she's yeah. also a dj marketing admin and the ladies of sound co-founder and sam you can take it away and introduce our special guests yes of course today is super special as we have a duo and my favorite couple that i see online <laughs> in real life and online um we have tone makara and ola they are both djs but they are as well a cool couple um which is uh you know such a cool uh different kind of thing that we have today to have this kind of duo so thank you guys so much for joining us um i'm so excited to have you guys here and to kind of talk about your journeys as individuals and also as you know as a unit so thank you guys if you guys want to say yeah. what's up. Having us. thank you for having us <laughs> you <for> girls <laughs> And what's also great is that these two have actually been to, uh, they actually went to our first Ladies of Sound event back in December 2018 when we had our panel. Um, they've also shown up to a good amount of BJIOS um, Q&A series when we used to do them in real life um, back at the school. And uh, we used to do live streams and things like that and, and they were able to come through. So um, this is very exciting to finally have the spotlight on you guys. So. We wanted to get into it so pretty much we want to kind of go over your guys's individual journeys as djs before you met um who's actually out of the both of you who's been djing longer who started prior uh, that would be me i've been oh. for about 10 years now oh wow <laughs> and you and you learned through scratch so this was back when scratch when scratch when um mr chalk was actually one of the instructors correct yeah so i when i first started it was what like 2010 and i was still in ohio living in ohio and i was just using youtube videos stuff like that to teach myself and then i moved here in, in the middle part of 2010 and then i went to scratch i think i went to scratch like 2014 mm -hmm. so i was there four years trying to do it on my own and just felt like i needed some you know some guidance to to kind of get more tools under my belt and then i went to scratch for the the program there what was that big um you know indicator of that huge leap of faith of just going from did you go to la specifically because of your dj career when you moved out here um funny enough i actually uh got to do have a degree in theater i oh. always been an actor <laughs> so I uh, oh, yeah. time I was like fifth grade all the way through college I was always in theater acting so I initially came here to to act but I had picked up DJing right before I moved here 
and I was working a nine to five, which I still do, but you know, literally it's easier for me to like have a side job as a DJ than trying to go on auditions as an actor. Mm. So I think I just let DJ become my number one thing that I, you know, wanted to do. So yeah, that was the catalyst was just acting and then DJing just became that thing for me. So you were meant to be on the stage. Yeah, in some capacity. <laughs> yeah, I'm shy in person, but like when I get on the stage, it's a different, a little bit of a different story. <laughs> yeah, I've noticed that a lot of DJs actually do have kind of a, a, a like a backstory of of them being in the arts or being some kind of creative prior to being a DJ, right? So sometimes when you do say when you're acting, it um, you know helps you build your confidence in front of people, right? Um, which I'm sure switched over to DJing as well. Yeah, it sure did. <laughs> and then Tone, you actually also went to Scratch, right? Yes, I did. Um, I I started, I moved here to LA in uh, 2015 and I didn't really know anyone and I just worked. And I, I was like, I need a hobby. I like music. Oh, I should learn how to DJ. So <laughs> I bought myself a controller from Guitar Center and I would just practice in my bedroom, right? Bedroom DJing at its finest. Um, <laughs> and I started getting opportunities really quickly because I would just have homies. They're like, oh yeah, um, my buddy's having a party. You DJ, right? I was like, I don't DJ. I just bought a controller. I just <laughs> am learning. Yeah. But I just would take start to take opportunities and I would just be learning on the fly. And with the opportunities growing, I'm like, I don't want to just be doing this and doing what I'm teaching myself or YouTube. I want to learn the right way. So in 2018, yeah, yeah in 2018, 2018. I, after consulting with her, the, the veteran, the graduate, <laughs> some other people, um, I went to Scratch and I went to uh, talk to DJ Dazzler. Uh, coincidentally enough, and gave me a lot of like warm feelings about the institution and made me feel good. And then I went to a kitten's workshop where I met DJ Ke Keita and everybody was so great. I was like, I'm just going to go here. <laughs> um, and then I graduated in November of 2018. Yeah, 2018. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I just went through a program and I wanted to be better and also working so that I'm being like, just like best, the best that I could be. So yeah, that's that's how I got there. Well, you said backtrack a little. You said that you had moved here. Where are you from, my friend? Oh, I'm from Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Woo -hoo! Oh, so no. you said I'm so sorry. You said you moved here because why? You just oh, moved? I just I well, I've been working in the advertising industry since right. off and on since like 2012, and I moved here um, with the agency that I was working with at the time because I was over Chicago and winter it's brick it's annoying and we <laughs> Google also and I was like oh these are good things I should go to LA and when I got here I realized that I had more opportunity to learn myself and the things that I liked because all I did was work so it shifted from me having my attention in my career to attention and hobbies and learning that my hobby could be a career and on that path came across so many DJs that just really opened my eyes to what it could be to have a sustainable, you know, uh, life doing what I enjoy. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was very transformative, I would say. So I did my homework on both of you. So I have some um, questions. <laughs> um, so, um, Tone, you, you, you're from Chicago. And I read that you had an event promotions background. And um, that led you, obviously, up to DJing. But there was a particular party that you threw and then brought to LA. So I would love to hear about that. I, I definitely, uh, goals on my list when things, uh, where people can gather, Again, I'm going to say things go back to normal, but um, mm. I definitely want to catch a party in Chicago because um, I do have cousins out in Skokie and um, they always tell me, man, you, you guys don't party the way we do. I'm like, what do you mean? So uh, I, I want to hear all about that. Uh, please tell us about that party and how you brought it to LA. Uh, well, sure. So, oh my God, I feel so old because it's, it was raunchy, but I used to be <laughs> part of a collective called the lesbian friends um our tagline was like superheroes but gayer and we really our goal was um 
we were a bunch of 20 somethings and it was either a really older crowd in terms of like the nightlife scene or a really young crowd. And we were the in-betweens. So we were tired of going to white parties. So we just created our own situation where we would bring in talent, um, like make the events interactive and it would always be wild, super wild, like <laughs> crazy. But it would be like kind of underground for a while, but then we started partnering with bigger venues and got into some really nice locations. Uh, so it was a lot of fun. One of my, my business partners at the time, still my good friend, moved out here as well. And we attempted to kick it off here, but realized that we are kind of old now. And there is a certain kind of gusto that you have to have in order to be successful in the nightlife industry in terms of coordinating, planning, booking, promoting. And I don't know that I've got it in my blood anymore, but um, it was a good time and we did it for several years and I got burnt out. And that was another catalyst that led me to wanting to like be the talent instead of booking it because of the work that goes into putting together an event and the anxiety you have before like the first person walks in the door because people don't get to things on time. So you're on edge that first hour, like, oh my God, is it gonna be successful? And then everybody pours in. That's stressful, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but it always was a good time. It was just the burnout of just living the lifestyle of partying hard, drinking hard, miscellaneous hard, <laughs> I mean, that's what your 20s are for. But um, I, I do love that, that, you know, you got to have that experience of understanding all areas of production. You definitely know what goes into all of that. It, it is a lot of work versus if you're like, I'm the talent. So I'm just going to show up, do my thing, create the vibes and then be out. Um, what, uh, what was that? What was that like? Were you like watching um, in terms of, you know, were you like watching the talent do their thing? And then did that make you feel like, I want to do that too? Um, you know, or or was it just the 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 stresses of of just production and everything like that, that kind of just made you think like, maybe, maybe that's a, a, an avenue I want to try? It was, um, I've always had a special place in my heart for the DJ. The DJ is really what controls the temperature of the party keeps it going um is one of the reasons that people continue to come because if the music sucks then you've got no action you know people can look good it can be a nice venue that doesn't matter if it's not rocking and i've always been a fan of booking the right types of talent and then just really appreciating their selections and then starting to take that home and play around it with myself like in terms of curating playlists and things like that and then getting a lot of joy from it and realizing that that joy could sustain me way more than actually planning the event did um, because it was less anxiety. The only anxiety could then be like, oh man, am I doing a good job? But if the music is good, especially if people know it and like it, you can kind of have mess ups, but it's not the same as if you've got an empty house. No. <laughs> So that was definitely a part of what led me to um, wanting to DJ more. And also the burnout, like the, the flexibility to be able to come in and go as I please without being responsible for the whole setup and breakdown of the night. Or you can have a life and be a DJ. I can still have a daytime job and not stroll in with shades and a hangover to make it work. <laughs> you know, I could do it all. So that, that was definitely um, a part of it. Oh, I love hearing that perspective because I am definitely the one that's like feeling all of that. Like, are people going to come? Uh, you know, I got to, you know, set up and then break down and be the first one there and the last one to leave. Um, and it's, it's really tiring. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I do think, um, you know, I, I want to ask you, you know, you know now uh, going from that and then moving to L.A. Um, and then uh, I found that you work at Cashmere Agency. Um, shout out to Rona Mercado. That's my, so <laughs> I love her. That's my girl. I haven't seen her in a long time. She's always working every time. I'm like, what are you doing? Let's go grab coffee. She's like, I'm working, I'm working. Um, so, uh, you know, Cashmere, uh, I, I've actually uh, shot for them here and there when I was a photographer. So definitely love the Cashmere Agency. Um, you're working there as a creative recruiter, right? And you um, hire folks for production, social media, PR, et cetera. Um, how, is, how is that, um, 
you know, you know, you be, you having that job, but it still seems like it's still kind of like creative and it's fun. And then, you know, you still get to have room to be a DJ. Um, I think Sam, you had a question about, um, you know, that, uh, that type of thing here. I, I forgot what you were trying to ask, but if you don't mind mentioning that for me, please. Yeah. <laughs> Basically how has, um, being in the advertising, um, world sp specifically a creative, um, recruiter, how has that helped in you being a DJ and then also vice versa? Cause they're both, or at least being a creative and then putting that into your, also your nine to five as well. Right. You know, it's, it's interesting because I, um, so I've been in the industry off and on for the last few years. Um, but as of now, it's more so, I wouldn't say that it has helped me. I think it just adds to more um, of a, an interesting flavor being in the space because I, I realize that a lot of the people that I work with are um, a part of the slash generation, right? Like where they are maybe working social media during the day, but they have uh, this nonprofit that they're working on the side or they're in PR during the day, but they also like run this initiative or for kids on the side. So it doesn't matter what it is, be a creative or not. It's a bunch of slashes. So I think that we're able to help one another because of that. We're our own pool of resources in that way. Um, Ola and I did an event on Saturday. This for, yeah, this past weekend for Juneteenth, where we were a part of like a Tulsa. Oh my God, I can't remember because it happened so fast. But basically whatever was happening on the ground in Tulsa, but also digitally. Mm -hmm. And because I worked for the agency and I was a part of the event, um, I knew someone that I worked with who had a friend who was an agency owner in Oklahoma and they were looking to give um, any event that was happening on Juneteenth, free PR, all media, like help blast it and put money behind it. So I connected the people at my agency who had to connect in Tulsa with the people, the PR company that was doing the event to get free press. So that has been like really good in terms of like helping each other with opportunity with our outside gigs in that way, more so than like actually like booking opportunities, more just like more help with collaboration, I would say. Um, and people are just down. So if you have something to do, they know because they're booking talent as well. And they've been pretty cool about like, oh, you got a DJ, okay, well go ahead and get your time off. Who's the better DJ? And you know, they because there's a couple of DJs that I work with, all different levels, EDM, like stadium, to like more like clubs. And they always like to pit us against each other. They're like, I don't know who's got the most clout on this call. I mean, we maybe we need to have a competition. So they're like busting our chops. I would say it's just been fun because they understand that you are a creative through and through. That was a long answer. <laughs> no, that was great. <laughs> that was great. So when it comes to um yeah, like gigs, this is all prior to COVID, of course. But um Ola, I know that you have also done well, you've done a lot of corporate you've done everything from um just bars, nightclubs, but also corporate gigs, which I think is super important for a DJ to touch on, especially when times like this, you know, um I know that there are people who are taking Zoom clients from corporate mm -hmm. um, and DJing there. And that's what's great about do, having these corporate connections, because even if bars and nightclubs are closed, your companies are still trying to function and run, right? So um, I know that you've done everything from, uh, you know, you've had all these other these big corporate events, but you've also done stuff for the LGBTQ community as well. Um, I know you've done stuff for Grinder, and one that I, I actually thought was really, really dope was that it was um, a fashion show, a transgender fashion show for Macy's um, and things like that. How important for you, because I know as a, as a Filipino American, I personally love taking events um, for the Filipino community off of just the love for it. I would have done it anyway. Um, how important is it for you to be taking these kinds of events, um, you know, in this community that you're a part of? Oh, it's very important. I mean, the the fashion show you're referring to is the Trevor Project. It actually mm, was their right. first ever transgender fashion show. So, like, to be a part of those types of events is definitely, I mean, it makes me feel good to be already of the community or whatnot, and then also to be able to support 
these corporate companies with the skills that I have, you know? It's like everything meshing together. So, I mean, it's all, it's been very important for me, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I um, do have a question. You, you, you said something in an interview where um, music and skills has kind of been a part of your journey, um, you know, because of navigating through this boys club of the DJ industry. Um, when you got started, you said you got a controller also, and you were eventually going to get yourself um, on turntables and learn the classic way. Um, how, how has that been, or how was that um, when you first started out and, 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 you know, started doing gigs and kind of just feeling like, did you ever feel like you had to prove yourself? Um, did you ever feel like, uh, you know, you had to, you know, step up those skills so, uh, you know, you people wouldn't even question anything? Like, how, how was the, the start of your DJ career in that sense? Um, yeah, no, for that definitely is something that you have in the back of your mind that I had in the back of my mind when I started. Because I was teaching myself, so I, I kind of, you know, I can watch so many YouTube videos or read so many uh, DJ forums and whatnot, but when you're finally like out there and um, and being, I mean, I guess being judged by people, it is kind of like, you know, I, I wanted to come off that, you know, when you first start, you know that you're not going to be that good, but the way that you're going to get better is when you're out there, like in the field, like, of course, I was in my bedroom just trying things out, but I found out later on down the line, I got booked for my very first gig and back in Columbus in Ohio, where I'm from, for like an art hop, it was like they do it every single month in the beginning of the month, like in the first Saturday. And I DJed at a sneaker store. And it was literally my first gig ever. And of course, like I'm thinking I have some things down pat or whatnot, but come to find out maybe like a couple of years later after getting better and kind of befriending people on the scene or basically guys, because it was more men than women. I don't, I actually didn't know any female DJs when I started. Um, one of my friends who became one of my mentors early on was like, you know, when you did that uh, event back in uh, 2010, um, I asked somebody about you and if you were good and they were like, no, she's not good. And I was like, who was that? Like, tell me who this person is. And it actually ended up being someone I actually knew very well who said it was a guy. And um, I'm all out. I feel like it's I'm okay. Like, it's like, I'm fine. <laughs> because, you know, you get kind of emotional. But when I found that out, it was later, late, like years later, and I knew I had was better because I had, you know, went to the school and everything like that. But I mean, it definitely hurts your feelings when you hear about those things. But I also was like, you know what, I had just started, you know, everybody has to take that path where you get better and better. And now, you know, I'm, I feel like I've definitely gained the skills that I needed to actually be able to just do a, an event and, and do as well as I can. So, I mean, in the beginning, you're gonna get that, you know? Um, Cause it was a lot of men. I mean, right now, this is, a, this is a really good time to become a DJ because we have a lot of girls out there or females or women who are doing their thing and you have mm -hmm. people that inspire you that um, are just out there. And lot, a lot of times the girls are, probably killing it more than the guys yes. are to be quite honest because maybe it is that part of us like where we feel like we have to be better um in order to be recognized and, and to to you know for for guys not to think like oh she's just a cute face that's why she got this kid type of thing but um whatever that need is for us to do our best I feel like it's definitely like shining at this point because there's a lot of girls out there doing their thing and we're getting a lot of recognition now yeah, definitely. And, you know, um, not all, not all men are like that, but, you know, I, I, again, I know from, from personal experience when I was in also another industry, uh, that was, um, you know, a boys club as well. Uh, you know, you get the, like I used to shoot photos, you get the like, oh, what gear are you shooting with? Like, and then they judge you on what you're using. Um, you know, cause then that would determine, like your knowledge of, of that craft. Right. And, you know, I feel like that's such a hard hump sometimes for women to have to get over. Like they don't know what it's like to hit that kind of roadblock where your, your skills are questioned or just because you can go in there and look at you in your fly off the shoulder orange dress. And they're like, you're, Oh, you're, you're the DJ sweetie. You're like, 
just because I can DJ in heels and wear some, uh, tight clothes or show off, you know, show off whatever I want to show off doesn't, you know, doesn't speak for my skills at all. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I, I feel like, um, you know, that's something that us women have to discuss all the time uh, when we are in this, this boys club, because you are going to get judged for what you're wearing. Um, you know what I mean? What equipment you're using and things like that. What would your advice be for, for girls just starting out? Cause how did, how, you know, obviously you knew that I just started, I'm not going to be hard on myself mm-hmm. and, and let it deter me. Um, but I'm going to take that with a grain of salt, throw it out. But, um, what did you do for yourself to, to get through that? to push through because, you know, we have, we have a lot of, um, at the school, at the, uh, the, the Institute of Sound, uh, our, our students are, you know, you know, they're, they're what we call green. They're, they're fresh. Just like when you go to scratch your, your, your skill level, you're there to improve your skills, but until you improve your skills, that confident in knowing the equipment and DJing, um, isn't going to come quite yet. Um, and then you have to work on, okay, now I have to find this confidence to get on the, on the decks in front of people and deal with all of that noise around me. What would your advice be for, for girls in that position? You know, you, you know what that feels like. What would you say to them? Um, I guess I would say or the best advice I could give would be, well, don't be too hard on yourself, like you said. Um, but also like, you know, that you're putting in the work, you're putting in the practice, the time, like with time thing, you'll get better. Like, it's not going to happen right away, but I'm just, I'm the only thing I have to say would be just make sure that you are back and like, get this. I'm sorry. I'm kind of like nervous, <laughs> so okay. I'm kind of my heart. but, um, I guess the best thing that I could offer you would be just keep going to the school. Um, learning the things that you need to pick up and beat match transitions, things of that nature. But also, I guess, don't take it too personally if something like a situation like that happens where, you know, I guess a man judges you or anything of that nature. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I feel like because I've, I focus so much on trying to build the skills that, I think a lot of, after a while, like people would be surprised, like men would be surprised when I would spend, and they're like, oh, you did a really, you know, you had a really good set. And when you have those moments, it definitely is a confidence booster. Cause it's like, I know, I know, I know what I'm doing, you know? Um, and you don't think, you know, just get out of your head when you're in those type of situations. So that, I guess that's what I could offer. I don't know if you have anything that might couple with that. It would be the same thing, you know, with anything, it's about devotion and consistency. And that is what builds the confidence. When you are so comfortable in doing a thing that you don't have to even think about it, I think that's what creates the, it's that ease of the experience and and that's what it is. I feel like you'll always have butterflies depending yeah. upon the the space and performance that you have. I know like Ola gets nervous, you know, yeah. I'll, I'll see her and I think that she's like the dopest DJ ever. But um, you know, it happens, it'll always happen. But yeah. then as soon as you start to get into your familiarity of things like, all oh, right, this is home. So I think that's what it's about, just consistency. Yeah, you're always, you're always going to get nervous. There's always going to be those moments. You're always going to feel like, I wonder if people are liking this music or who, if there's other DJs in the room, if they're, you know, like you say, judging you by what you're doing and just watching closely. But once, I guess once I like get that first song on, the first couple of songs, mm-hmm. you get into your groove. I think all that kind of just goes away and mm-hmm. you just let the music be the, yeah. the deciding factor for yourself, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. Oh, and also to that, um, I, I read it somewhere, um, and I can't remember exactly where, but it's like, you can't, you can never compare yourself to anyone. They're like, when you talk about leaves and plants, they do their thing. They're not like, oh man, what's that, that oak tree doing? You know, oh man, he's green and green. <laughs> they are simply being, and when you are just like being yourself and living in your truth and doing you, that's when you like shine the most. And we have to remember that. We are dope. Everybody's got something different to offer and it's not to be compared with anyone else. 
No, I love that. I love that. And knowing that you also, um, Ola got uh, trained by chalk, I'm pretty sure he uh, <laughs> made made you believe in practice, 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 yeah. as you know, that practice um, will always build that that confidence. You know, that's something he has not stopped up, uh, up to this day. Uh, I still hear him counting bars in my head, even though I haven't been in school for a while. Um, but, you know, I, I love that. Thank you both for for that because you know again um you know starting out especially as a dj like i'm shy to get on the turntable so i give it up to y'all ladies for like going up there and just killing it when all eyes are on you um that is a, a it's it's a whole thing in itself to know that you're curating the vibes of an entire room and you got to get the feet moving. You got to get everybody feeling good. Um, and then of course, you know, whether you're starting off the party or ending the party or you're at the prime of it, um, there, there's a lot that, 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 that goes into it, but you know, you guys have so much experience, both of you, um, Ola, you, you, you've done corporate gigs to, you know, parties. Um, how do you transition from, you know, going to corp, you know, corporate parties are one thing, and then another thing, it's another thing where, you know, maybe you get to be more, a little bit more free in, in DJing a party. So um, can, you, can you tell us a little bit about the corporate world and, and what's that, what that's like? And then how you finally get to get, you know, get to a party and you're like, all right, I get to play whatever I want. Type exactly. of stuff. No, it's exactly the same way you said the corporate gigs, like you, you know, you got to be buttoned up and um, I mean, I'm always presentable, of course, but like you literally have to like, maybe they want you wearing all black, you know, like you, you don't have much creativity in certain corporate gigs. It depends on who you're DJing for. Um, but then like, you know, you're bringing a lot of equipment which is with you if you're doing like in-store corporate gigs and got to lug around speakers and, and controllers and things of that nature. Um, so it's just one of those things where it's like, and then they usually they're longer sets, four, five, six, seven. Sometimes I've done eight hour sets. The corporate gigs can be quite long. Um, but I, anytime I get a chance to like be able to dress the way I want and show my like personal style, um, as well as play whatever I want, I don't have to play clean music because that's always a plus because I have way I mean I have like the I can basically just play anything at that point in my entire library and it's not just um only set like set types of, of music that has to be clean I, I don't know I think when that happens I get a little excited because it's like man the sky's the limit at this point you know um but I do appreciate the corporate gigs because those are pretty they I would have to say those have been my bread and butter right <laughs> <laughs> have been my bread and butter for sure like I didn't even start doing corporate gigs till after I graduated from Scratch. Mm -hmm. And it was because of Scratch I got with the agency to do the corporate gigs that I started, um, which that's why I always, you know, I mean, I can't say anything bad about Scratch from my experience there because it's definitely what I needed to like take me to the next level. Um, but yeah, I mean, doing the parties, doing like DJing out in West Hollywood at, at a couple of the clubs there, you know, everybody's free. You can play almost whatever you want and people will just kind of go with it um, and then get back to your corporate gigs. And those are the ones that you get in the evenings on the weekdays when you're not DJing a party. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, I've all, also been fortunate to be able to keep a nine to five. So I have all this streams of income coming in from a couple of mm -hmm. different things and that's really big because it's expensive to live out here so yeah. <laughs> I have to be able to sustain my lifestyle but yeah and the <laughs> flexibility of your your particular nine to five because her place loves her so much that they think that she her being a dj is cool and they give her the time off to be that dj yeah it doesn't really matter i can just be like hey i have a gig tomorrow and they're like oh really so who are you djing for <laughs> you know and I'm like, oh, uh, <laughs> top shop or something, you know, it'll be like those, That's types, tight. you know, mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. It's a great one. You have, um, you know, support, um, from all kinds of people and, I personally love support from a significant other. So you have Tone and you have Ola, you have Ola from Ohio, you have Tone from Illinois, and you're both here living in Los Angeles doing what, what you do on your own. And then like, I don't know, you come to a gig and it happens. It's happened to some of us where you're at a gig and you meet someone. So was there ever a time that you might've met someone special? I don't know, at a gig or something. <laughs> Yeah, I want to know. I want to know how you guys met. 
<laughs> wow. Oh gosh. Um, oh, she's so shy. But we met at a gig. So I was DJing a Halloween party in Fairfax, Fairfax district. Um, this was like early stages of being a DJ started, right? um and I just had some equipment and some stuff had happened it was a bummer of a night but I went on and I smoked a joint and I was like in the zone I was like having the best time ever and I see this cute little girl come walking little up girl. I mean not little girl well, I me, but I mean she... you're a petite but <laughs> old lady walking up and she's like oh my god what's that song what's that song and and I was like come on back you know I didn't know the etiquette of a DJ I didn't know what I was supposed to be okay with but I was like, come on back, you know, let her look all up my screen, steal my songs. Um, <laughs> and we exchanged like social media. Yeah, we exchanged cards. We exchanged cards. I had business cards at that time. Oh, you're coming in and out of Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, you gave me one of your cards and I uh, gave you one of mine. And actually, that was it. Like, I went to the room. I was, at, I was there with Freddie. I was at a party with one of my friends. And we were just having fun. I liked the music. Went up to her. Um, and but that was the only encounter we had. But I invited you because I had a, a I was DJing at this little hole in the wall, um, Carbon Lounge oh, in right. Venice, oh, and yes. I I had, I stumbled upon a, a weekly. They always needed a DJ, so I went there, and I was like, "You should come my DJ on Thursdays." Right, and she Friday. came to support yeah, one time, I did. and I was like, "Oh, she's straight." I can't talk. To oh, her. I brought my <laughs> but I brought one of my friends, Freddie. Right, it was this guy who was. <laughs> Not her boyfriend at all. No, no. He was just, he's a really good gay guy friend. <laughs> so, Freddie is so gay also for me to think that that's but, your boyfriend is yeah. uh, hilarious. But I thought that was her boyfriend. So <laughs> I thought she was cute, but I didn't, I didn't pursue. But I ran into her again at the same venue a year same, later mm -hmm. for like a paint and sip party. And I was like, man, she's really pretty. And it was a full moon. And I was like, I gotta try to talk to her, you know? A full moon. It was a full moon, I remember, because I remember talking to you and looking up at the sky, and I was like, oh man, the moon looks crazy. You are, I can die. <laughs> I'm very whimsical. So we exchanged numbers, and then I invited her to a Ty Dollar Sign concert. Mm -hmm. And then I got sick and I couldn't go, and she thought I stood her up. But the week after that, I invited her to hang out. And she thought I invited her to hang out under the guise of like, oh, we're DJs. Let's just be like cool DJ yeah, friends. The whole time I was music. trying to holler. Um, and, you know, the rest <laughs> is history. Pretty much, yeah. We met up and hung out. and Yeah, I invited you over for tea after we had a, a long night of boozing. And then you were my, my boo ever since. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it's true. I did invite her over for tea. Yeah, I did have tea. It was good. Yeah. And here we are. That's how you that do was it. three years ago. Tea. <laughs> Invite them over for tea. And we just so happened to both be DJs, and that also, you know. <laughs> yeah, and she's been a tremendous help to my whole DJ career ever since then because she is a guiding light. She's been in the industry longer than I have, and she's really kind of helped, not kind of, she's like helped me to formulate my path and get me in the right direction. So, um, you know. Aww. It's super valuable in love and in life. <laughs> okay, that was very poetic. Cause I, that's what this is. It's a poetry, baby. Okay. <laughs> you guys are so cute. I love it. <laughs> How did it go when you guys were fine? Like, what, what was your first, like, maybe DJ session? Like, I can imagine that that could either be really nerve wracking or you're like shy now. You're like, I don't want to show you how I do it. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm sure it could get like a little bit, you know, interesting or kind of nerve wracking. She is the kind of teacher that expects you to get it immediately. Yeah. She does not slow down. She's really quick with it. Like, boom, 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 boom. I don't understand why you don't get this. What are you doing? Because this is how you do it. So it's not always easy. Yeah. I have to take my feelings out of it because, right, you're my girl, we're partners, mm -hmm. and I have to take that out of it and be like, okay, this is just someone who is an expert, and I'm learning from an expert. I mean, I, you say expert, but... I mean, I'm just saying, like, in terms of, like, learning, learning. You know, we're always learning. But you don't have any tolerance for me messing up. I mean, just, <laughs> so, yeah, I guess, just a little bit, but it's only because I want the best for her, of course, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, so those early sessions were, but you know, you went to, this is before she even went to the school. Yeah. Um, and she was, I had no idea that she had, like, when I first met her, I didn't realize she had just been DJing for only what, a couple of months. Oh, uh, wow. Thanks. A month, you know, whatever. Know so you, like, the thing is, I think we get into our own head. Um, yeah. A lot of the times when we're first starting out. And so she would look to me because I've been DJing longer, but you know, I went to scratch and, and uh, went to the school 
and I had been DJing for four years before that, you know, so it's just, yeah, you know, in due time. Well, she's been good. Like a, a lot of like with making mixes and editing and things like that. She, she was really instrumental in helping me just to have a strong, a stronger foundation, but she don't play. Is the yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I, I understand because of her, who her teacher is. So I think, <laughs> you know, I think it all goes back to that. DJ Revolution, Mr. Chalk, like yep. they're like veterans. And so, you know, it kind of was like, it probably rubbed off a little bit, yeah. but you know, we both we both did pretty well. <laughs> how does, um, yeah, so how is it like to, you know, obviously you guys have this shared passion. Um, how, how has that been um, as a couple to, to have something like that together? And it's not even just like, we love music. It's like, we both DJ, we both love to DJ. And you, you, you know, you guys can bounce ideas off of each other, um, you know, and I have some pictures up, I'll, I'll bring that up again, but you guys um, have DJ together. How, how has that been, um, you know, because you're you're used to being you guys as a couple but then now you guys get to I mean as a, as individual DJs and then now as a couple um how how does that work being able to like you know share playlists or put each other up on 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 game on on certain you know yeah. techniques or songs and that type of thing yeah that's a no you go first I'll say that's a bit I mean that's it's it's always nice because like we'll, we'll like we have our studio set up in the back and what we'll do is mm -hmm. we'll like play like DJ games like where mm -hmm. you know there's a theme that's thrown out there like sometimes our friends literally this is what we do our friends will come over we'll have drinks and we'll all go to the studio and they're like all right we have a hat full of themes so you're gonna take what you mm -hmm. know we're gonna throw out a theme we're gonna see who plays the best song for mm -hmm. that thing like well you know so we can bounce those type of like because those types of sets can lead to like when you're playing out when you find yeah. things that actually work really well together um, so that's one thing that we do. Sharing music is a big thing. Yeah. Like I, I like to do like kind of like a music history at times where I'll like find one artist and then I'll start playing music out loud. She's like, oh, I forgot about that song. You know, mm -hmm. those types of things. I think that's that's the perk of having a girlfriend who's a DJ as well as you are because you're both just into music. Yeah. Um, we so, test yeah. each other a lot on music history too. Like we'll play a song and then we're like, okay, sampled who sampled that. these songs? Mm -hmm. who, how many people sampled this song and what are the samples? It's so different. it's a lot of uh, like knowledge sharing in that way. And just like, we have two completely different styles of, mm -hmm in the ways of like what we're most interested in like yeah. she how would you describe your hip style r&b r&b hip-hop i mean i play i'm open format so i play everything but i like mm -hmm. old school classics you know 80s 90s 70s classic soul r&b and then the new stuff 90s r&b yeah for you though like, i am because i'm from chicago i am a house head so i love thing all things house any kind of house deep house disco soul a little bit of edm you know some acid eat that kind of things but i am also a very like hardcore hip-hop head and it'll be one of the two yeah, but true. i'm an open format dj as well because of like corporate settings so like sometimes i get into my alternative and pop shit you know what i mean so it just depends but it's never going to be the same kind of set and that's what i enjoy about yeah. playing with her we play together because yeah. we bring two different perspectives and it's not like oh man you burn me it's never going to be like that <laughs> Unless I put her on some music and I'm like, wait a minute, that's the, that's the who'd you time. get that from? Right, because we have shared music, of course. So like I've taken some of her music from her crate. Yeah. I'm like, oh, those are some good house housey things I could play at a lounge or whatnot, you mm -hmm. know, when I'm doing like Lowe's Hollywood Hotel or something like that. Yeah. And, and then of course, when we're DJing together, I might throw on one of her tracks or whatever that she likes to play. And I'm like, yeah, I got that from you, you know? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. That's the power of working with someone is being able to have that as a resource, right? Yeah. So how does, how is like a day in the house sound like? Because I know from, from what I've seen before that you guys have like a two by four setup, right? You have technically two full setups side by side. Yeah. Guys, we'll practice with each other like at the same time. Sometimes, like, at the same time. sometimes she'll go in and she'll practice mm -hmm. and I'll just kind of like listen to her, you know, yeah. and I, it's kind of like, um, because we practicing together doesn't always work because of course we don't the clashing of the music or whatnot. Yeah, so I'll have to have my head just listen to my headphones and then I'm like we'll have to switch out on who's actually playing out exactly. in the speakers unless we're doing something like practicing or playing a game. Whereas 
I am like beat match or just like, you know, trying to beat match based on just what I'm hearing to transition to make it smoother. That's a good point that you brought that up because being able to beat match by ear is mm -hmm. really, um, it works good when you're doing those back to back sets. Cause yeah. we do like, because of her network and because of my network, we've been able to get gigs, yeah. like really good gigs based off of like, oh, she knew someone who has a, who has a premiere happening. Mm -hmm. Let's bring on her girlfriend and let's have them, you know. They think but, it's cute. But, <laughs> but also when you're DJing and you're mixing from one DJ to the next, that whole beat matching mm -hmm. my ear is really important because I got to be able to mix in with what she's playing, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, that was just a caveat, but, you know, that was yeah. a big thing of, how, like, we had to learn how to do that versus looking at the screen all the time when it's another DJ hooked up. You know? Yeah, and then, you know, it just takes away from the performative uh, aspect of what people expect sometimes. You know, they don't want you looking at the screen. They want you to be engaged with the crowd. So it helps with just being able to be more fluid. Yeah, I think um, that's awesome. And, and also too, when it comes to a two by four, I think, um, you know, the, that there's this, it, it seems easy, but you guys really do have to listen with your ears because bouncing off each other like that does take a lot of practice it's not as easy as it looks right so i think that's so cool you guys have such a cool relationship and i like how you guys play games and like you guys just make each other better um i really i, I love that um so I know um, we are actually coming to our Q&A portion and we have some people in the chat room and I wanted to open that up to everyone um, so you guys can, uh, you know, go ahead and ask away. So here we are at our Q&A portion. If anybody wants to go ahead and um, ask these two lovely ladies um, anything, please go ahead and type a one in the chat or click the raise your hand um, little sign in there. Don't be shy. Uh, go ahead and let us know. And I don't know where my chat box went. You guys being shy. In the meantime, I actually have a question. Um, when you guys do back-to-back -back sets, I know you guys did one recently. Um, I know everyone actually does back-to-back -back differently. Some people will do maybe like um, 10 minutes one DJ, 10 minutes the next back and forth or they'll do three songs three songs or they'll physically do one song one song one song one song i'm just curious what do you guys tend to do when you do back-to-back -back sets we, um, what do you prefer we, well okay so we switch it up depending upon how much time we have yeah so the tulsa um live stream we did on saturday for juneteenth it was literally like a 15 minute set you know yeah so it was like you Short. do one song i do one song mm -hmm. and we go back and forth and just quick mix because we want to get in as much as we can but we did um, a black lives matter uh set like two oh, weeks yeah, ago right right and right. we got like 40 minutes together so at that moment it was like okay i'll do three you do three mm -hmm. or i have two or you have a couple it, it just started going based on like the, exactly. the flow of the song um, and then for the lena for lena's the 20s premiere that we did we had like it was like a four four or five hours so maybe like they were like 45 minutes 30 here yeah maybe so i would take like a whole like 45 minute set mm -hmm. and then she'd come in and i would go down to the dance floor and hang out with some of our friends or get some drinks or get a drink you know <laughs> so it just depends but like the longer sets i think i prac i personally prefer to do like a longer set if I'm going back to back, mm -hmm. like 30 minutes or something, to an, even to an hour, if it's like a four or five hour set. Because you didn't really get in your bag. Yeah, because you really, cause, <laughs> cause to do one and one, sometimes it's like you literally have to kind of be ready. Like as mm -hmm. soon as I play a song, it's a lot more prep involved in the like if we just have to go one, 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 one. But I like when we could just go in there because we could just be freer with that longer set. Yeah, with the longer set kind of Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I actually wanted to um, ask about that for that 20s, was it the premiere? So with Lena Waithe, you, you guys, I kind of did a little stocking. You guys <laughs> have known her for a while, right? This isn't, this wasn't just specifically for that event. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Well, so I met Lena randomly. I had a, my best friend lived in New York once upon a time. She lives here now. And um, I went, our birthday's one day apart. Yeah. And I went there and she wanted to have our birthday in New York. So she lived in Brooklyn in a brownstone and she just threw this crazy party and like the whole, everybody in the world was there, I felt like. And I ran into Lena there and then we were just like, you know, cool associates, I would say from there, but she always kept up and she was always interested in what 
I was doing. She seems, I will say this, not seems, she is extremely supportive yeah. of young creatives. If you have something that you are working on to get off the ground and she can help you in uh, getting visibility or providing opportunity, she's all about it. Like her and I would not talk all the time, but she will always check in about, oh yeah, I see what you're doing. That's what's up. I'm proud of you. Keep at it. She's very encouraging and she's just all about just wanting to see people succeed. So when um, she saw that I was graduating, she was like, let me know when you're ready because I've got a bunch of work coming up and you are going to DJ one of my premieres. And I was like, where, where? you know how people talk, especially, I, I don't know, I haven't experienced it, but I always have heard in Hollywood and LA, people can be kind of like, you know, and they do a lot of talking. So I never really expected her to come through on her word when she actually had premieres and to be like, you ready? Mm -hmm. Because I was very like imposter syndrome. I'm not ready for gigs, even though I, I have been. But um, she told, she had been telling me before, like a year before 20s ever happened. She's like, I got a show, it's coming out. And when the premiere happens, you're gonna do it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, yeah, sure. And then when the rap party came, she booked me for the rap party. And then when the uh, 20s premiere came, we got an email from the booking agent. Yeah, I, yeah we both got We both got emails. it. And I was at work and I was like, oh, damn, you guys, because they said they reached out to... They reached out to both, to of, both us, of us, but it was individually. So we didn't know exactly. the other one had been reached out to. So when I got you the told email, me first. I was like, oh my God, I got to call, email yeah. person. And she's, I was like, so what do you think? She's like, go ahead and do it. You yeah. know? And so I was like, I told them every, you know, we talked about it. Little did she know, because she didn't check her email, that they were trying to reach out to her. So when she... I was at work. So when she checks her email, she's like, oh, I think you guys already tapped my girlfriend to do this. I didn't say, I think, I said... I know okay. you reached out to Ola already. That's my partner. She will be phenomenal. You're you're in good hands. She's gonna handle it. Um, I you know it's like I can't take this opportunity away from her. And they were like, "Oh, you're so dope." But we want both of you, so we're not taking anything. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm down." So it was awesome because that's the same thing. Like I don't want to step on anyone's toes yeah. either. You know, ever I'm like all about sharing the wealth but yeah. they've been really awesome about yeah putting us both into it and then like uh what else during the quarantine when we first yeah the quarantine they were like hey we were doing uh, the, the um season finales coming up we want to have you guys back do you know do can you do it on lena's instagram you know mm -hmm. she's she's just they stay looking out. they always look out um, they they're just a good community of people and they want to help out the folks that they feel like are up and coming and give people an opportunity because they they remember being in those places. So it's awesome. Super important, especially <laughs> in the black community, right? And that's everything that she embodies is, is oh, yeah. uh, putting people along. So dope, thank you so much. No um, we actually have a question here from Tierra. Um, hello, Tierra, if you um, want to ask them. Hey, Tierra. <laughs> hey, um, hey, um, hey, yo. Feel free to ask your question. All right. Um, I'm T. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. So shout out to Ohio. Oh, I follow you. I follow oh, you, no. DJ Queens. Caesar, yeah. Yes. Oh, nice. Yes. Caesar, no. yes. So, um, <laughs> what do you guys do um, to stay motivated? Like when gigs are hitting, or even before you move to LA, like the scene, the DJ scene is different in Ohio than it is in California. So, like, what do you guys do to like stay motivated or when gigs not hitting? Mm, that's tough. One. Yeah. <laughs> You know, so I think for me, it's crazy because before, like when I first moved to LA, I was maybe booking two gigs a year, three gigs a year. Like it was very, very infrequently that I was DJing. And I actually had a moment where I was like, what am I like, I this, I'm trying to like do more, you know? And I mm -hmm. think that's when I, I was like, you know, let me go to scratch because there's community there. Like mm -hmm. I, I didn't have any of that. So I think at first it was one of those, like, I was very, like, just new to, to, the, to, the, to the scene, you know, and I didn't have anyone there to kind of, like, guide me. But I think when I was lacking motivation, going to the school was the first thing for me was to get there and start kind of, like, getting more skills and gaining those skills and the knowledge. But then what ended up being even more, um, like, even more of a gift, if you will, was just being able to be around people who are like-minded individuals. Mm -hmm. So whenever I'm lacking those type of things, like if we, yeah. if I'm, if it's been, I've been very blessed in the past couple of years because after scratch, things just picked up and went 
like up from there. And I, I literally would be booking like 10 gigs in a month and I'm still working full time. And that's on a part time basis. But in those moments when I wasn't feeling motivated, I, I, I would have to say it would just be kind of like getting with the, the people that I befriended in the community, kind of like, hey, you know, talking to those people, like, you know, what's going on in your area or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but also like just being able to go out and see other DJs, kind of maybe like seeing other DJs to, to kind of give me more like, okay, yes, I know I want to be out there. I want to be doing that. What can I do to, to, to get myself there? Oh, so this person, so who do you talk to? You have a DJ friend. Maybe you're like, hey, I want to DJ your spot or I want to DJ your night. Like I, I, I've exchanged gigs with Dazzler, you know, like where she's like, hey, Christina, you want to come? Or Ola, Christina's my one, but hey, you want to come mm-hmm. and DJ in Santa Monica, you know, get on the set for an hour. And those would be those things like in between those moments when I'm not really spinning, mm-hmm. where it's like you get new people who kind of get a chance to see you. Mm-hmm. I hope I answered like, your question. Also, yeah. yeah kind of. I'm kind of long-winded at the same time. We don't have Scratch Academy anymore in Cleveland. We used to, but they like shut mm-hmm. it down for some reason. So like the closest would be like Chicago or um, mm-hmm. California maybe. So we don't even have Scratch Academy anymore. So there's like no DJ schools or anything out here really. Yeah. So it was more so just like a small nightlife scene and yeah. And I and I know in Cleveland it's a very uh just from DJs I follow in Cleveland, I feel like if you're like on, you're on. Yeah, like, exactly. Type of thing or whatever. So I get it. I mean the best thing I could say is like it just kind of if the community aspect is something you can cultivate for yourself mm-hmm. where you're at. Create it, build it. Because I think that also I mean another I mean getting out of Ohio, like Columbus is not but you know, it's kind of similar to Cleveland. But coming to somewhere out here where there's just so much more opportunity. But while you're there where you are at, I think that would be the number one thing is just being around people that do the same thing that you do and finding, you know, those moments to lean in with them. And you? Yeah, I was, what, what you were saying, basically, okay. like, you know, I, I know from following you, like, I've seen you at some competitions and things, and it seems, yeah. it seems like, I mean, you know, I don't know, but. Like you got a, a network of people that you do connect with in terms of these competitions. So maybe like spearheading something where you guys connect once a month and talk about opportunities or just to, like a DJ link up. I know that there's something here that D, she mentioned DJ Dazzler does called Ladies Link Up. Maybe it's just like a general DJ link up where you guys, you know, set up some turntables, rent a space, and you guys are talking all things DJ. Maybe there are some panels that are like it's informal but formal in a sense that you have some po- folks coming in and sharing stories and you know it is just like some fireside chat kind of thing and you're talking about and doing it and being immersed in all things dj at least once a month or once a quarter yeah. and then people look forward to it and then more folks start to draw in and then you you have your community in Cleveland and you got folks that also travel a lot too from different places in the Midwest Detroit Chicago Minnesota maybe some folks will start dropping in and then your network starts to expand from there true true it's Uh, work though that is work you can't just drop in so that's a part of it right right I feel you well, thank you for that, Tierra. Um, yeah, so, you know, um, we are also a community of uh, DJs here. You're uh, always welcome to join uh, Ladies of Sound community chats um, and, you know, to touch on what they had said, um, you know, prior to uh, the Be Junkie Institute of Sound opening, um, you know, we were kind of like, you know, in terms of Ladies of Sound, I, I didn't really know too many uh, female DJs um, and I've been in this industry for quite some time and there's such a small handful um, of women uh, you know you you know about you know the Spinderellas and the Jazzy Joyces but you you don't know about groups of, of women um, so when the school opened in 2017 um, we're over in Glendale California um, I was actually surprised to, to see how many women walk through the door um, I honestly thought I was going to be the only girl, uh, you know, I've been to, you know, beat junkie events and just, you know, it's also very hip hop. It's synonymous with that genre. So, you know, going to these rap shows and hip hop shows, I'm like, 
<laughs> where are the girls at, right? So that's what I kind of thought it was going to be. And lo and behold, when 50% of our student body um, were women, um, I was inspired to create this community to where, you know, before there wasn't a lot of things for, for girls, uh, for just the girls. There's a lot of things for the guys, but um, that's what inspired Ladies of Sound. Um, and just a little bit of a, a, a spoiler, we are, um, you know, working on a, a website revamp where, uh, you know, hopefully you'll get to connect with other people, um, you know, in other parts of the world, but especially over in, in Ohio. Um, and to touch on what, what Tone said, that, that's something, it is a lot of work to put these things together. But if you do have that network, um, you know, kind of what we've done here in LA, uh, you know, there's, 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 there's women that have taken charge and, and tried to get, you know, gather everybody so that we have everyone. Um, I'm fortunate to be uh, obviously part of the school. So, uh, you know, the, the, all the women that are, uh, you know, students and graduates, uh, alumni whatsoever, um, they all still keep in touch. And it's been, amazing to, to see it grow. And then we are able to do things like community chats because of quarantine and then have special guests like Tane and Ola and, and all the other women we featured. And it's amazing to just see how how big the ripple uh, is is getting, you know, throw that and throw it rock into the pond and it's just, I see it growing. Um, so you're always welcome to, to join us here, meet, meet um, you know, our girls. Uh, you know, also too, we have an online, um, we do teach online and do private lessons. You actually can, uh, you know, get some lessons with, with Mr. Chalk, who's who, um, at, you know, uh, Ola also learned from. Um, so if you ever want to just, you know, uh, get your skills on, uh, we definitely focus on the foundation. So please check into that. Um, and before I keep rambling on, uh, I want to, we're, we're going to get to you, Marina. Thank you so much for uh, being so patient. I want to read Marisol's question. She is one of our students and she's currently uh, on the road. So she asked, and she's not sure if she, you guys answered this already, but um, what are your aspirations? Uh, what are your aspiration years from now with music? And you both are awesome, she said. <laughs> Aww, thank, thank you, you so much. <laughs> what are your aspirations? Um, well, one, which was coincidentally. It's okay. <laughs> last year, I was planning on quitting my nine to five, my full-time job, so I could go and DJ full-time. Something told me not to do it, and so I didn't, which now I have no gigs, but I have a nine to five, so I have still have some income but oh like maybe in the next couple years a year or so once everything is back to normal or whatever the new normal will be I want to quit my job so I can DJ full-time um but in terms of aspirate career aspirations I want to travel all over the world like like I just would love to be like DJing in Paris for some private event or you know just those types of things and I also have a I have a little bit of an inkling where I want to also DJ on the radio. So I guess in the years to come, my aspirations will be radio, spinning on the radio and traveling all over the world, just spreading music, the gift of music, the love of music with other people, you know, with everybody, you know? That's a dope, that's a dope aspiration. Too. Yeah. <laughs> um, I see myself as a next step. Like I love DJing but I struggle sometimes with feeling like I'm not passionate enough about it to like push myself further. Um, so I know I have interest in some things and I feel like it doesn't always have to be like, oh, I'm super passionate about it. I can just enjoy something and, and do that. But I would like to cultivate more um, enjoyment around doing different things. And I feel like music production is something that has been really kind of pulling at me. I learned a little bit about like making edits and chopping up songs and that's fun. Um, and I want to do more of it and just like try to incorporate some other things in terms of like DJing and maybe some live instruments and just kind of like be more experimental around what I can do with like flipping DJing on its head. Um, as well as like being you having that as a uh, an avenue where I earn more money than like also having a daytime job I think yeah. having a little bit more flexibility to be creative is important and um, finding ways to create the space so that I can <laughs> 
Oh, that's so awesome. Well, I mean, you know, production's the natural progression of a DJ. So I'm excited to hear uh, you go that route. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to close out the, the questions. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Tiara, uh, for uh, your uh, question. And um, you, um, anyone that's here today, um, please drop your um, Instagram uh, handles uh, so we can all follow and uh, keep in touch. I'm going to go to our next screen after our Q&A. And if you guys enjoyed our special guests today, please follow them. Here are all their information. They're on SoundCloud. They have their websites, all the things you need to have when you're a DJ. So please follow uh, and uh, check all that out. Um, your guys' websites are nice. I love that. I love all the photos too. Um, super on point. Very important for DJs. Uh, you know, I, I know that sometimes that's something that's kind of an uh, afterthought for a lot of people, but I like it. Like it. Um, so please go ahead and share your in IG handles, guys. And um, we're going to move on to our Sisterhood Spotlight. Um, and this nomination uh, was from Tone and Ola. This is, um, <laughs> please follow I am dot muse. She is a self-taught visual artist, illustrator, and muralist based in LA. Um, and her portraiture is basically what exploded her onto the art scene. I mean, as you can see here, uh, you know, I love this. Um, she, if you go on her website also, um, there's this really cool video of her actually painting the uh, Nipsey Hussle painting. Uh, and I, it's, it's so on point. I love that she made it a shirt. And you can see here she painted Beyonce. Um, but please support and follow uh, Madame Muse. You can find her art at shop.madammuse.la and then follow her on Instagram. Thank you guys for sharing this. Can you want to get, is this your friend? Um, please go ahead and um, share a little bit about that. Why, why'd you nominate her? Well, Thank obviously because she's dope. Yes. Yeah. So, um, well, here, take a video. I want to send it to her too. Okay. Um, so first of all, she's an amazing artist, but she also, so she's married and she taught her wife how to, um, be a painter as well. So she was like in the military or working in banking like years ago. Yeah. And then she would just doodle at work. And one of her colleagues saw it and was like, Oh my God, you have some real talent. And it's like, Oh, it's just something that I do. Um, but she, moved here and like devoted 100% of her time to creating art and really like started cranking out some beauties and selling her work and then like created a platform for herself and her wife has joined in on it as well as also an amazing painter and she has been selling her work everywhere she's mm -hmm. been featured in New York Times like all kinds of publications she was at Essence Fest last year um, really, really dope working is all about what I believe in, in terms of becoming safe, self-sustainable based on your talents, like finding a way to make things work with just your creativity. And I think that that is just amazing and phenomenal and commendable and gives me inspiration to do more of that. And we've also spent, we've you also DJ yeah. for her paint and sit parties. Yeah. So. And we oh, met yeah. at, was it her? It was actually their Oh my God, sit. it was at her. That's it was at their paint and sit. That. Not where we met, but where we got reappointed. Yeah. Oh that my God. Fun. It was in the stars. We're going to tell her that. Yeah. I don't know if she, <laughs> she doesn't know. Yeah. No. Oh <laughs> Full circle. That's Aww. it. We love this. Also, I'm a huge <laughs> fan. So this is tight. Thank you yeah. guys so much. Yeah, yeah, thank you to follow her, guys. I'm going to follow her now. Yes. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> Yes. So I'm going to move on to the next slide. So uh, it talks about supporting your sisters. Um, we have some live stream listens. If you guys want to also check out Ola on SoundCloud, you can find her at DJ Ola. And for Tone, her SoundCloud is right over here. It's Tone Makar. And also uh, one of our BJ iOS students, if you want to check out her Let's Groove Mix for 28, she's here. Hi, B. Um, go ahead and check that out on Apple as well. And if you guys have anybody that you want to uh, keep sharing on the Sisterhood Spotlight, whether it's, um, you know, a live stream or a mix or 
art or anything like that, please let us know because we would love to share and help spread the word and support our sisters. Um, you know, all that kind of stuff is, it's free. It's not, it's not hard to do. And if that's, uh, if you can't afford to donate or, or buy certain things, um, please let us know so that we could at least spread the word in this way. Um, so thank you guys for, uh, I'm excited to listen to some of this later on today when I have some cleaning to do. Uh, <laughs> um, one today while making this presentation was perfect. Yeah. Yes, I love it. I, I, I feel like, um, you know, during, during quarantine, it's like, you know, sometimes you just have to do things, you need the music and I just, we just get all of these amazing mixes sent to us um, and then we get to feature them. Speaking of which, if you guys are on Spotify, uh, we have also some playlists you guys want to check out. You can go ahead and search for us, um, Ladies of Sound, and uh, follow us here. Uh, we have some new stuff that um, Sam just put up, the snow, just as no peace, so please check that out. And um, thank you for uh, tuning in. Um, you guys know that we actually just started an artist wellness series. Ola, I know you like to work out. So if you guys are interested, we actually have a free high intensity uh, interval training workout um, with uh, an NAS NASM certified trainer. That's the National Association of Sports Medicine. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> with with uh, Oscar and um, his wife, DJ Tiff Star, who is, um, we actually just did a chat with her not too long ago with Chaotic Blaze, but um, they're going to work us out really hard on Thursday. So this is something we started. It's going to be six o'clock every Thursday. They're going to be coming up next week. Um, and just so you guys know, we have um, them coming up and then we have another yoga session with one of our students, um, Paulina, if you guys want to check that out. And then um, Juliet Mendoza, she does Jill's house uh, before <laughs> we quarantine and we could go out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, yeah. she's going to actually talk about nutrition because, you know, one thing that um, I can honestly say, and this is from hearing from a lot of friends, when you are out at a gig and you're DJing and it's late, the options are not that great. I mean, I don't really want a, you know, uh, what do you call dirty dog, <laughs> as we call them here in LA, or, or you know, yeah, yeah. And so she's gonna actually talk about that and kind of give us some tips and tricks on how we can do better with that, because you know, again, uh, DJs eat on that late night tip. It's just kind of hard to avoid. You don't want to eat before your gig. You get hungry after, but what is there to eat? So we're going to have a nice talk about that. And then we're also going to talk about mental health with uh, Sam's good friend, Marina Moreno. And we're going to actually do some uh, exercises uh, to kind of, you know, just get us through quarantine. And also um, she has some really fun uh, things that we're going to do. So please tune into that. Um, and then uh, after these lovely ladies, we have DJ Iwami coming up next week, Golden State Warrior DJ. And then we have Spinnerita based out of LA and then Kronika coming on after that. Um, oh, this is dope lineup. Yeah. Hi. You guys are on that light up too. So. <laughs> um, so if you guys missed any of this, um, you guys can check this out on our website. We've had uh, Daoshe, Bella Fiasco, uh, Damo, Cherish Love, um, and so much more. So you guys could always check that out um, on our website if you missed it. And also, um, if you um, want to come back and listen to this uh you know, chat with uh, Tony and Ola. You can check that out there as well. It should be up in a few days. Um, and again, thank you guys for supporting. You guys already know. Um, if you guys want to go ahead and donate to us for future programming, we're actually donating all of our funds to, um, I love, um, you know, donating to the Loveland Foundation. Uh, that's who we're donating for the Black Lives Matter movement. And right now going forward, all of our donations will go to those organizations. So uh, feel free to go to our website and click the donation button. Um, but thank you guys uh, for being here. And uh, if you guys want to say bye to everyone and a major thank you for donating your time and just talking with us and all, all the, you guys are just can we be friends outside of this when this is over? Yes, come on. <laughs> He said, come on. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Thank you to all the ladies who are in the room. Also, you know, we got a, a, a guy student too. So thank you guys so much for joining us. We will see you on Thursday for the workouts. Yes. 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 I'll be there struggling. <laughs> yeah. Thank yeah. I'm not putting my video on. You guys don't need to see me sweating bullets over oh, yeah. here. So. But thank you guys. We really appreciate everybody here. Um, excited to keep in touch. And uh, ladies, we're going to totally hang out after this. Uh, you know, quarantine <laughs> is over. I can't wait to hug people and see people again soon. Um, but thank you. Thank you again. Um, you guys are awesome. And uh, Sam, do you want to go ahead and say any last words? Mm, see you Thursday when we're sweating. Yeah.
Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Okay, bye. <laughs>